message from God to you. If God thinks it's okay for me, then it's okay for me. I'm going to use God's report. Hallelujah. He says I'm a star and that's what I am. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? You are about to listen to a transformational message by Apostle Aki David of Light Givers Ministries International. Stay tuned and be blessed. We set the pace for a greater So I want to touch on something that should bring comfort, but it's not exactly comfortable for a lot of people. I I wish you not miss I mean, I need your full attention. It's a very, very important aspect of Christianity that is not spoken about a lot. The things I want to touch. Please, I hope you all understand English. All right. So I don't know if we have to do interpretation. I'll start with... Um, now, I don't know how far it is is something that maybe I'm here to research on. But I was researching on something and I found out it, was, it wasn't until about 50 years ago that people started batting hot water in the world. Meaning that if we are looking 100 years back, we are not going to find people batting hot water. It was not a thing in the world. But today it's a comfort to many people. The last time I was here, a few weeks back, I was teaching you something that poverty as a word meant something different in Jesus' day than what it means today. If you want to interpret scripture, which is why we are not interpreting scripture so well all the time. If you want to interpret scripture so well, we must interpret it to suit the times. Because the times are not the same. A few years ago, people were not living too long. The way death moves you didn't move people. Because death was a normal thing. People died than today. In wars, that's what I was telling you, members of the Ottoman Empire, some of the battles, within a night, 20,000 people were dead. Imagine, how many people have relatives in there? By the time you are born as a young guy, you know that you are going to be trained for war. I went to school, we were studying the Spartans. Yeah. The education system is such that when you are born, some people were thrown to wild animals. If you are able to come back, then you are fit to join the army. Sons were lost in battle. That's what I want you to know. But today we are in some... Fo- in fact, when you understand this part, you understand these things, it helps you appreciate the times in which Jesus lived. Jesus lived in a time where a crime such as you saying that you are Lord meant crucifixion. Think about it. Today, somebody can say, I'm Jesus today. And we'll get away with it. Not even an arrest. That should tell you the times you are in is different from that time. And if you are not careful and you are swept away with these times, you can't stand. That's what I want to say. We'll read a few things in scripture. But, you see, for some years now, I've been of the view that people should be trained just as they should be trained, period. You know, it's nice for us to go out there and we speak nicely to everybody. Um, the Bible says, love people. You don't know what people are going through. You know, I mean, the Bible teaches us to communicate love, things that build. You know? I don't think building is sweet for the cement. But we'll come to that one. It's not sweet for the cement. The cement is peaceful in the bag. You want to build the cement. You think the cement is having peace. When you are pouring water, mixing with sand. Do they agree? Have you asked whether they want to now remain? We'll talk about that. There's this side of Christianity that we are not sharing with the masses. No, think about it. Your boyfriend says he's leaving you. A Christian boyfriend, a Christian girlfriend goes and says, I marry another person. Then this Christian girlfriend brings acid and pours on the guy. That's somebody that cannot handle emotions. We must grow. It's true that we have children in the house. You know, there was a time when Peter, the church, they were being persecuted by Nero. When you first Peter. They were being killed. Please, I want the scripture for this afternoon. They were being killed. When Peter wrote, you thought Peter was going to tell them, oh, 
Come down, the Lord is your... No, 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 no. He told them, why are you behaving as if you are the only ones dying? That's what he told them. He asked them, why are you behaving as if you are the only ones dying? When we use a statement like, okay, when we read the whole Bible, we've not seen anybody who followed God and didn't prosper. It matters what you call prosperity. Because I don't think Peter died rich. <laughs> I want to repeat. I don't think Peter died rich. Uh -huh. So, it is true to an extent. But we must appreciate what this word is in. In fact, you may go about loving other people. It doesn't mean that's what you're going to get. When you are prepared for it, you can handle loss better. You can handle rejection better. Today, what have we found? Christians cannot handle rejection. You are coming to church and one member found out you because of what I say I live in church. Offense. The kind of things we get offended by. Was it the kind of thing that could move the early church and the people Jesus moved with? We must find out. We must find out. Oh, please. Where is the image? We must find out. No, no. You know every time when I come and ask for it. So give it to me. Are we? Yes. You wanted to work in a company. That company will make you great. We don't know yet. But because of the rejection of somebody in that company, you say, I've left the job. You are sitting at home. That uh, you will look for another one. What happens in between the lines? We can't face tough times. What, where, where is the teaching of faith then? Do you know what faith is? Faith is that I believe I have peace, even in the midst of trouble. That's faith. Faith gives you joy. When there's no room for joy, people should be asking, why are you happy? That is the faith we have. When we have Christ, we have hope. Worry is not for the Christian. Worry cannot be for the Christian. But today, what have we found? Today, even <laughs> anything we give Jesus, we are looking for an exchange right here on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not in the Bible. That's not what's there. I want to read a few things. I want to read it. And, and interestingly, people come to church, they want to hear what will make them happy. They are not interested in what the Bible actually says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not every day you come to church, you are come to hear an encouraging word. Better than the meek. It's your responsibility, Jesus will tell you. <laughs> are we? Yeah. Because of a form thoughts we find in our times. Let me give you an example. Um, just a few, let's say a week ago, Israel nearly entered another war with another country. But do you know they were prepared. They had what is called iron dome. Have you heard of it? It is used to destabilize bomb. So if your bomb is coming to not reach them. I hear they are one of the only, they may be probably the only group that has it. They, they made it themselves. Russia, Ukraine war. By the time they were going to start the war, people like senior high school students were already being told what a bomb looks like in the classroom. Teachers were trained. For us, if they say there is a war now, we will all die. Some of you yeah, yeah. After all, people in our country here uh, carry a gun. I've told you, the Ten Commandments, it didn't say, thou shalt not kill. It says, thou shalt not murder. But in the Bible, there was a killing. If somebody is coming to kill you, and you have the opportunity to kill the person first, to defend yourself, how many Christians can defend themselves? There are Christians who are afraid of cockroach. <laughs> yeah, 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 Christians. And is that David? No. Abraham called his servants at home. They carried swords and went for war. They came back victorious. An old man. How many of us can fight? You think you can stand there, you call Jesus, and then you come and fight for you. That's why the pastors have security men. Mm -hmm. Let's repeat. You, know, you will die before your time. You will die in the name of Jesus. You will go before it is your turn to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shall not murder is somebody and I murdered the person. But the right word there is that shall not murder. It's not that shall not kill. Killing, after all, those they read that shall not kill for when they're not killing. When you read it, what do you say? David went for war. Do you think he went to smile? When you heard of Goliath and you were happy. Do you are you, are you aware he killed him? Are you aware he chopped off his head? Are you aware when you read it? How many of you? You are afraid of rats. 
wrath. When we got our Bible handed over to us, their students are prepared for war. For us, anytime we hear of war, we have to go and beg somebody because we don't want to be in trouble. And we will blame it on Christianity. No, no, no. We blame it on your own mindset. You cooked up a story from the Bible and thought that was what was in the Bible. We want to read a few things. Today you see someone say, my neighbor's not like, I, a lady came to see me in one service in a house. A, a mother, three children. She was crying. Why? She was talking to her, she started crying. Why? Two or three people at a workplace hated. Do you think if Peter was hated, then Peter would be worried? I don't want Christianity some people are having. We must be prepared for rejection. You must be ready that somebody you care about will die. Death is normal. Transition. If they should be giving death into this world without anybody dying, we cannot be here. It is part of life. This is not the only place we'll be in. We don't prepare our children for such things. You are not prepared for life. I, I tell people, the Bible says, train up the child in the way he should go. When he's old, he shall not depart from you. You can't train an adult. You can train a child. Some of you say, your character is already formed. Your character is already formed. You may act on emotions. Emotions. Somebody says something. Even this Sunday, I was sitting with two people who had an issue. Two Christians here. And one was crying. Why? Because somebody has said something hurtful. It's true that the Bible says uh, there will be babies among us. But you cannot be a baby for eight years. You can't tell me you have been a Christian. You were put in Sunday school. And you are 22, 23, 24, 30. 30. And you are hurt by what somebody said. What God is looking for from you is that you are moved by what he says. Not what others said. In fact, who, who is going to judge? God. Not people. He's the one going to judge. Is that not it? In a general note. What God says about you is what should move you. Not what somebody said. I don't know which Bible some of us are reading. You must grow. This world is full of hatred. I was shocked one day listening to um, Bishop Eddie Paul said, something your own, you say your own pastors wish you dead as a founder. He was talking about, uh, tell me. I was like, ah, some Bishop Eddie Paul, who, your, who wish you dead? Say your own pastors can wish you dead. Uh, there's something in Ecclesiastes I love. It says, be careful not to be listening to everything people say about you because he says you may find your servants insulting you. And then the analysis is you yourself. There are things you've said about people behind their back that they should hear. You will try going to apologize for. People, there are even people who say things they don't mean. They just talk. You are, do you know it means you have given them power over you? It means this is you that Jesus valued and died for. You've dated a woman. You taught everything. You protected your child. You protected. Then she leaves. You drink poison. Or you do what? Life moves on. Life moves on. Oh yeah. David lost a child. The baby died. David anointed. God saved it. David lost the baby. The baby died. What did the Bible say? David sat down, mourned for a while. Then went into onto the woman again. And they had Solomon. Yeah, 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 yeah. David just went and then they, he said, No, I'm at birth again. Yes. Eh? You are mourning. You are mourning. Eh, you are crying for the past 10 years. Every time you open your mouth, a full adult. Eh, my parents never liked me. Please. Please. Your true parent is the father. Abba, father. That's his name. What are you saying? You are moved. And you must grow. In fact, the scripture, it said, Great blessings belong to those who are tempted and remain faithful. When it came, did you fail? Let's read something. Ephesians 6, verse 11, ESV. Good. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. This is what is in your Bible. The schemes of the devil exist. In fact, if you study the chapter, you're going to find something called the evil day. The Bible says there's an evil day. There's a day, there are times when things will happen. Bad things. It's not about whether you are prayerful or you are not prayerful or you love God or you didn't love God. It's not about those things. It's not true. It's not true. There's something I learned earlier, early on in life. I, I, we were taught. If you should open your door, you left your door open, you went to town, came in to find something stolen from your room. The first thing you do is not blame yourself for opening the door. 
As well, it was your door. The room is your room. The one who came in was a foreigner. So the first thing you should do, go and locate the person. Get your thing. Maybe the other person is running away. Are they saying, why did I open my door? No, no, no. Let's say it was a snake. The snake is a foreigner. Kill the snake before you tell yourself, okay, next time I won't open my door. But what, what do we find in Christians? The first thing, they beat themselves. They don't solve the problem. Ah. The, the, the snake is the foreign ma material, the foreign thing here now. It's my room. It's my door. If I leave my door open, it's not a crime. It's my door. You have the right to enter. He said, put on the whole armor. Amos are for who? Every child of God is a soldier. You must start believing it. It is a militarized zone. Soldier. Jesus didn't come to give birth to babies and you are, up to now, most of the prayer is nye, nye. You know, my nye. When you open your mouth, nye. Oh, nye. Everything is loaded with your nye, nye. Hey! Who made me that way? The angels will be shocked. The angels will be shocked. Oh, you are looking at me. He said, please, I don't know why my teacher hates me. <laughs> Did the Bible tell you they will love you? I think you are reading another Bible. <laughs> I mean, as I must have for soldiers, you must start believing that. Revelation chapter 21. The journey we are on is so much of a fight. 21 verse 1. I is perfect. It's so much of a fight that we must engage heavenly resources to finish well. It's a journey you are on. Your whole life, since you were born, since you gave your life to Christ, since you got born again, you are going to fight and fight with the resources heaven has given you to you leave this world. It's a battle. From one battle to the other. From one battle to the other till you leave this world. Then I saw a new heaven. So it's all about the new world we are going to. This is the last but one chapter of the whole Bible. Alright? Yeah, we're going to chapter 22. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth because the first heaven and first earth had disappeared and the sea was gone. Next verse. I also saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, new because one is old. The one you know now on your map will be extinct. New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. He didn't say it's a bride, he said prepare like the way you prepare a bride. Next verse. I heard a loud voice from the throne say, See, the tent of God is among human humans. Now God is going to remain with human beings. That's the world is, is building for us. That's where, I mean, that's where we are going. He's interested in staying with us. So if this one doesn't go, that one cannot come. He will make his home with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and he will be their God. That's what he's trying to do. Let's see the next verse. What is he going to do then? He will wipe every tear from their eyes. They would have cried here. They would have cried here. They would have cried here. So you wipe it. Those who don't need anything wipe there. We don't know where they are going. There won't be death anymore. So you will die. There won't be death anymore. There would have been death. People will die. There won't be any grief. Uh-huh. You will grieve. Cry or pain. Because the first things have disappeared. It is the first things. When you touch something that has some small pain, pain you leave the thing. Small thing, you have, you have never started anything and finished before. Say, I'm going to stay, because I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to be a baba. You went small, you saw that, Charlie. I hand you. Then you left, say, mechanic. I hand you to a, a full woman. You ended up at a, a salon for her dressing. That one too. You saw two gay boys. You ran away. <laughs> Next verse. Hmm. You, you can't stay in Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> The one sitting on the throne said, very important, see, I am making all things new. He said, write this. These words are trustworthy and true. He was talking to John. John he said, John, write it down. What you're seeing, write it down. I'll show you what I'm interested in. Next verse. I'm reading. Yeah, six. Then he told me, it has happened. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. I will freely give a drink from the spring of the water of life to the one who is thirsty. Remember, the one who is what? People are thirsty, no, no. Let's continue. <laughs> Next verse, the last verse I want to show you. The person 
Who will watch? See, if it's not for the weak, the person who conquers, the person who conquers, the person who conquers, the person who conquers in that church, the person who thrives doing ministry, the person who thrives in life doing all those things, the person who conquers, we've been giving the resources. We've been giving prayer. We've been giving the word. We've been giving faith as a tool. The person who wins is not for the defeatist brain. The one who 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 stand to be defeated. The person who conquers because the whole book of Revelation is a horror movie. Oh yeah, we can go to chapter chapter one. It's a description of what John was seeing. You know, introduction. But chapter two, chapter three, seven churches, seven churches. Man, not Asia. What were they hearing? Be faithful unto death. Can you imagine? Jesus met John and told John, right, for this church that they are, being, they are being punished for me. Tell them to be faithful to death. I have three children. I have two children. You know. you, when you are reading the Bible, you decided not to see it. But you live in another time of hot water, fast food, and some other things. You, you are in a privileged zone. Without AC, you say, things are not all right. I just told you, 50 years ago, nobody was batting hot water. It's, it's, it's a comfort. So it means when you read of Aristotle, Alexander the Great, they were batting hot. Sometimes it was snowing. Huh? It was snowing. I just said Russia has existed beyond thousands, thousands of years ago. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Aye. Is it, is it even there in the Bible? Can you imagine? Yes, yeah, so many years. Do you know how cold that place is? Uti, Uti Russia, what are you here? And then, Uncle Hamburg, Korea Hamburger, now so see your brother. If you New York, you see your brother. Tell I will be his God, and he will be my son. The sons will be people who have conquered. They would have conquered. Conquered the body. That's for the last few weeks, we were talking about something. How does something does what he pleases? Anything he wants, he does. Anything he felt like doing. No discipline for something. That's how he felt. Something didn't end well. Solomon, that's what he prayed to become. Mami Nyansa, he says Solomon, didn't end well. And when Jesus came, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30, he says, Jesus is greater than Solomon. Change your prayer. To say that you want to be Solomon, or you want to be David, means that, go as the Jews. David, he doesn't joke with women. Huh? Women. Huh? Go read. So when you say, Father, make me like David. You will kill Goliath, but you will finish women. Yeah. Hmm. He's the one who, who went to mourn in, 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 with a woman and gave her Solomon. You, 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 what are you saying? A greater than Solomon, wiser than Solomon was Jesus. So your prayer must shift. Your prayer must shift. Are we here? The person who conquers. The person who conquers. If you don't win, you are not going to last. That's our first Timothy 1 verse 18. KJV. Good. The one who is, is talking to his spiritual son. This Apostle Paul. Timothy is his spiritual son. A son here. That's where you hear of father sonship. You don't usually see that in the Bible, you know. In the Bible, you see God and his children. But when you get to Timothy and Apostle Paul, Paul is clearly, Paul clearly states that Timothy is not a relative by blood. He's his son in the faith. And they have a special relationship. So he writes to his spiritual son. This charge, what is a charge? A charge to keep I have. A charge is a command. It's not, it's not a negotiation. Some of you, you cannot be charged in anything. Yes, yes, yes. A charge. A charge. You are under a stepmother. Be. She will not kill you. But she makes you wake up early in the morning to work and do it. It has not killed you. You are running away. Do you know what it will do for you? In fact, today in my life, I thank God for those who treated me harsh than those who treated me soft. God, life is not soft. Yeah, yeah. Some people treated me harsh. Not out of hatred. Not out of spite. They hardened me. Mr. Beckham hardened me in school. Koasari hardened me in school. People hardened me. Relatives hardened me. When my head was tingling me like that, I was thinking like a last one. But I'm a firstborn. Some people hardened me. I'm grateful for all of them. My first pastor, the wife was very tough. If you are, some of you were in that church, you ran away. You can't remember, he's at the back. He used to run away after service. 
the rings here, Matthew. They ran away. Very, very tough woman. You join the church today. She's, she's working with you as if you have been in the church for 20 years. The kind of roles and responsibilities. In fact, let me give you one example. One day she told me, we are having a big all night somewhere. She said, we souls and bring. Then I called her. I said, I know I wasn't working. in high school student. And she said, I, I got a fast load of souls. She said, put them in a bus. When get to the church premises, no, pass by my house. I'll sit in it. She has a car. She said, no, we'll sit in it. When we get there, I'll pay. When we go to the church premises, she looked at me and said, Brother David, bye-bye. And she went to the church premises. Here I was with the torture driver, the gun torture driver, ready to tell me, hey, <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> I remember to people, how do we pay before? But I had to master. I saw myself, I saw myself telling and say, please, we need to contribute and pay. And we all contributed and paid. What kind of training was she giving me? Ah, he said she deceived me. She toughened me. I used to be very... I, you, 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 people see me today, they think I talk. My dad will tell you I don't talk. I never, that's why I don't understand football. No, no, no. I, you don't see me watching football. I'm always in the room. I am reading. If I want to watch something, something... Sitcoms, period. I don't even make friends. My whole life. If I want to count friends I ever made, it will be like two. But somebody toughened me for this road. They, they taught me, some of you, if you are waking up now, you may wake up, you struggle to wake up, not some of us. There are times I'm, I'm going to go to a place to preach, and I go to bed at, let's say, 3.30 a.m., and I rise at 4 a.m. Can you do it before? You can ask my staff. You see them, they, can, they don't want to do what? Some of them say they don't want to do that. They really want us to go like that. <laughs> can you do that? When you have not said for, let's say, two days. I see people when they are waking up, they struggle. They don't love their bed. Apart. Some of us, the kind of way is us. There's no room for you are going to. What are you, what are you saying? It was, it was as if they knew we were going to do ministry. It was as if they knew. That is the law son. Something tough. Nah. Hey, media, media. I cannot. I cannot. Emotional and nonsense. Huh. This child I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies. Let me see. The, the prophet has prophesied over my life that I'll be a billionaire in two years. So I'm going to, it is going to happen. Let me show you Bible. According to the prophecies which went before. I bet, I bet, sure. Yeah, sure, come on, yeah. Before on thee, thou, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So that. They say when you hear the prophecy, the prophecy shows you where God is going to wait for you. Then you, you take the prophecy and you begin to fight to that place. You, you are waiting for it to happen. Hey, just like you are waiting for the electricity issue to change. <laughs> you are waiting. You don't say anything. <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> are you here? Next verse. In fact, no. Let, let's take it to TLB. Let me read it in TLB for the living Bible. Now, Timothy, my son, here is my command to you. Fight well in the lost battles, soldier. Fight well. Think like a soldier. Don't quit like men. Fight well in the lost battles, just as the Lord told us through his prophets that you would. The prophets have prophesied that Timothy will finish well. They are saying, trouble don't come. Fight. Don't quit. Remember the prophecies. Do you remember what? The prophecies. What? The prophecies. <laughs> Next verse. Cling tightly to your faith in Christ. If you don't cling to it, <laughs> embrace your faith in Christ. You know, you lose it. And always keep your conscience clear. Do what you know is right. Sometimes to do what you know is right means you are going to make enemies. And many people are not ready for that. Take your money, start a business, and you are not tough. Like a question I've always asked people. Are we in heaven that you start a business and you're not going to oversee? Then the people to take care of it for you. Share. I don't know about TV. You already know how did he? Teachers who are stealing from children. They say bring pencil. Children bring 12, 12, 12, 12. They select it, it put in the room. Then they tight on it. They tight on it. They are closing your school gradually. Parents are getting angry that 
they, they buy, they are told to buy pampers for, for these great children. And your child comes, you ask your child, oh, do you, so you, came, you saw that the same one, no? No, you have started marking it, just to see. You mark it, they buy the same one. You go say, did your child, oh, you don't know, now. Nah. Sometimes your child comes the, with the slap on the face. You go to say, oh, I'll pray, I'll pray. Then the child says, it's Madame who did. And you, the head teacher, doesn't know how to stand in meetings, they sometimes be tough. Be tough. This is a public school. The customer may not always be right. That is a public school. The customer is always right. It's not the same way. Then we are coming from there. <laughs> it's public. The customer cannot be right all the time. You'll be there too. But if it's private, you know, it's something private you are dealing with. Start a business. You, you wake up, you tell them they should go open the store at night. And now they know that you, you, this you, you have never come to the shop before 12, before. It's always after 12. Very soon. You come and see the rats. You know what I mean? When, when, I will not stay in rooms with my mice before. They know when to display. As soon as you do, they are gone. It, now, it, you, you, we know your trend. We know that, hey, our boss can never wake up after 10. He's a lazy master. They are even telling people that, oh, my boss. Ah. When, when your servants know to bring people to your house and throw a party, you can say, my boss, oh, where he is going to? He will not come early, my boss. He will, be, he, will, he will sleep, sleep, sleep. They say the boss is coming to you, come at 2 o'clock. You are only a party at 10. You will close at 12, you will sleep before the boss comes. You, you are not sharp, you are not smart. You think Jesus was not smart? You think Jesus was not sharp? <laughs> then now business has gone down. You are, you are now bringing seed. You didn't put in effort. You are acquiring big envelope. Father, please pray by it for me so that when the Lord help me start afresh, I, I will start. <laughs> the Lord should help me. He should give me a second chance. Share. <laughs> you are the good workers he gave you. You have mismanaged them. They are gone. He gave you some people who are loyal. You mismanaged them. They are gone. You mismanaged them. They are gone. Now who are you going to look for? Say, so please, if the Lord will give me second chance. He's a God of second chances. He gave Moses a second chance. Huh? But not all of them. He didn't give Esau a second chance. I have mercy on whom I have mercy. Esau didn't get a second chance. The book of Hebrews says, Esau sought it with tears, with tears in his eyes. He didn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. The men, the men started coming to you at 22. And you are not calculating this. <laughs> please, me. No. I'll marry at 35. Then, uh, I have some plans in my life. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Hey, now all my mates are married. You are, you are praying like that in your privacy. You are not telling anybody. <laughs> Nobody knows. When you see it's as if it doesn't move you. You don't want them to know that it moves you that you are not married. When you meet someone, they say, Oh, this, I'm telling you my second born. Oh, may the Lord bless it for you. May the Lord bless it for you. Then you enter your room, you are not thinking. Now, by 37, is not an outward prayer point. You are no longer shy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shame is coming. But we are in Africa. If you are in a particular country, they will require it. Not Africa. They now meet and say, Sister, why? This good morning. This good morning. Your relatives, your uncles are caught. When your uncles meet at a funeral, somebody say, What about your daughter? What about your son? Say, He is working in Macau, he is working in Kofobia. Then we are told to see you are coming over, you are coming for the program. They look at you, ah, where is your wife? Yeah, I'm not married. Oh. Ah, so no man, eh, no. We'll pray for you. Now you have become a prayer point for family, prayer point for church, prayer point for where you work, prayer point to your neighbor. Your landlord is praying for you. But they want somebody to be sweeping. They want somebody to be sweeping. Instead of toughening up, toughening up, you are looking for Mr. Perfect. And you yourself are you perfect like that, that you are talking about, you are looking for Mr. Perfect. No, 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 no. If he was perfect and he came, you, you spoil him, you make him imperfect. You better check some of the one, two, one, two, that is okay, and then look for the one. You are there, you are there. Uh, you are looking at this, you are looking at this. Me, if you don't have a car, I will never marry you. Your father never bought a car. Raise eight children, this is your mother. Eight good children. Your mother has been used for eight strong little children. Eight! Eight! Say, if you don't have a car, what about you? Can you not buy one yourself? Uh -huh. So, your husband, you can drive. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, 
This is how we change focus. Then now you say, I'm impressed with that. It's as if the power of the Lord is not. I'm looking for a change that is very sharp. Very sharp. You are not sharp. You are not sharp. You are not sharp. You, you, you are not sharp. You are mismanaging your life. You are not sharp. I know you didn't come to church for this. But don't worry. I've said it anyway. Because some people have disobeyed their conscience. Yes. They don't do what is right. They are afraid of faces. They don't do what is good for the ministry. What is good for the neighborhood. Yes. You must speak the truth. Sometimes it's good to tell somebody, oh please, auntie, the way you are raising your children is not okay. You know that you'll be insulted. You don't have life and children. <laughs> uh-huh. And you may be insulted, but at least the person, when the person goes in there, the person will think about it. You would have saved somebody's child. But the way you are raising, some of you, 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 you say, they say the Bible says you mind your business. You didn't interpret it well. What does it mean to mind your business? Was just minding his business when he took something inside killing people? No, was that just minding his business? No, sir. That's interpreting the Bible very well, though. <laughs> That's interpreting this Bible very well. <laughs> you are not tough. You can't say, sometimes I tell people on my staff. Sometimes you see when they want to be loyal to each other instead of loyal to their work. Just say, oh, oh, who put this here? You saw the person. Today, a ghost took water <laughs> from a fridge. A ghost in my office. <laughs> a ghost, though. Even if they saw the person, everybody's afraid to say, is this one. No, no, no. Speak for the good of the place. What if it was something brought? Do you know in the Bible, food was brought for the prophet? The prophet didn't taste it. These people ate it and they started shouting that they are having stomach problems. They had to pray for them. Yes. Yes. What is not for you is not for you. As soon as you take it, you're a thief. You're a thief. Be tough. Speak the truth. This week, I didn't know some people were quarreling in a department in, in, in church. I closed on Sunday. Here, here, here. Everyone was leaving. One was very bold, walked towards me and said, These two are quarreling. I said, Well done. Because I suspected as much. I saw some signs, me, but I didn't give my mind to you. I was busy. And I said, Thank you. Then I said, Come, let's sit down. That person has helped them. Yeah. If not, they, are, they will be quarreling for a month. Their prayers hindered. That's what the Bible says. It says, When you go to pray, forgive. If you, it says, If you have any desire, uh-huh, make a request. Believe you have received, don't doubt that you shall have. But before you go to pray, it's a forgive, it's a condition. Those of you carry bitterness before you pray, no, nothing will work for you, nothing will work for you. If it is this Jesus, you are not going to get anything. Better get some uh, uh, snap and things and look for the idea of believe. But if it is this Jesus that we are all serving, if it is Jesus that we are all serving, it's a when you go to pray, forgive. So that that's why I am here. Any TV? <laughs> Only one? Only one I have. Who are you? If God has not made you, who will you be to be here talking? The one who made you say forgive, you say no. Eh? No? You buy iPhone, 10,000 Ghana CDs. You come and you cannot play music. You don't get angry. You want to download a game? No. You put your favorite Facebook? No. The only thing you can do is phone calls. You will get angry. What we are doing to Jesus. He says, when you go to pray, forgive. Some of you say, my prayer is, I say, no answer my prayer, then do any. Would they are your question? He says, forgive. Let it go. There are people who have to be forgiven. There are people who, who stab us in the back and they come smiling and we know that uh, it is our duty. This week I was talking to uh, our ministers and their wives and I was telling them that in times when some of them must learn to condone the reactions of people. They are rather saying we should come and side with them. But our work, according to the Bible, is the members. The Bible says for those of us who are ministers, the members are our work. They are our field. So, what we may accept from them, we may not accept from the minister. And that is the place you are standing in. It is by choice. People think that God only calls the minister. When God calls us, he, the members, he calls them. He called the pastors who were kind of the founder. He calls everybody. You are saying, we should come inside with you. Meanwhile, the work we have is the people. Yeah. Some of them come to you talking to you say, hey, Apostle, your daughter, your son. Not I. So someone asks him, 
So you go to receive the reward from God. You go to receive it on behalf of this one too. What you are saying, God should be rewarding for taking care of 15 people. It should all come to me. Is that what you are saying? Some of our ministers, they met us too late. They don't know what we've seen. Huh? I have been to church and somebody gossip, a gossip I have not heard before. I mean, something that can never be true. People, we pray school this for Rev, he's there. He was a band pastor. The whole church left church one day. After about eight years, they want to return. I talked to them. If you, if you want me to pray, I pray for you. I don't have a problem. After all, when they left, I became better. I learned. I became better. Today, nothing can happen. Nobody can say, hey, I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm leaving the church. I will pray for you. We'll talk to you. But we leave. Left, right. Left, right. We are moving. <laughs> Military zone. One has fallen. We cannot cry too much. Three people, you've been sent to a site to go. You are carrying your guns. Then they shot one of your people. Are you going to stand there? Do you think soldiers stand all the time they carry your body? Sure. So then you have to leave the body. Some, some never officers throw bodies into the sea. They throw the whole casket into the sea. That is military. That's military. Warfare. You want to be pampered. Your father pampered you. Your mother pampered you. Your siblings pampered you. You come to church. Pastor must pamper you. You don't know. If Pastor Israel gets you. Yeah. Twins. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know a lady who was married to a police man. The man was in high capacity. But they were not stationed in the same place. And the marriage seemed to have some challenges. The lady is a policewoman. The man too is in the police. And the lady was in Accra. So she started going to, I don't know what they call the other commander or what have you, I don't know the name. But her boss, you know, those are ahead of her. And she'll be going to the man to go and give, you know, her issues. My husband did this. And uh, I understand the man was dating somebody in church. And it was evident. When he comes around, he'll tell the wife to sit in the back seat and put the girlfriend in front. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So, this lady and the man were like, the man is comforting, 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 comforting. By the time we hear, the lady has been comforted. <laughs> she is pregnant. And do you know the funny thing? The man by then had not started sleeping with the lady he's trying to work. So, this is something they could have solved. You see? So, she rather got pregnant first. And the man was very happy. Opportunity has come. He went to church to tell everybody that my wife is pregnant for her boss. So that they, it will be what? A reason to let her go. So you are careful. You be careful. You're a lady. Small problem. You have started watching. Your husband says you want to watch football. So you are not going to watch your telenovela in your neighbor's room. Uh, oh, please. We've pastor for 21 years. We've heard some nonsense. Eh? I know a member who went to iron in somebody's room was raped. She went to someone and said, ah, please, let me iron. You are going to iron somebody's room. And I think she was already like, yes, they, they think go like this, they come like that. And the one said, Tale. <laughs> Tale. <laughs> Look at the trouble you have landed in because you couldn't be bold for two days. You didn't know what the Lord would have done in two days. You couldn't be patient for God to do his thing. Patience is in the Bible. Patience. Hmm. Tale, let's go. For some people have dis disobeyed their consciences and have deliberately done what they knew was wrong. It isn't surprising that soon they lost their faith in Christ after defying God like that. Yeah. Not all of us will finish. That's what he's telling you. If you don't work at it, you think this world is the end. No, no, no. This, we are passing through. We are passing through. Where we are going to is beyond one million years. It's, it is called eternity. It is not 60 years. As you are sitting here, some of you think you live to be 200. It's not true. It's not true. As you are here, you better embrace it. <laughs> you will better embrace it. You look at us. You will not see that here. You will not live to, to be 200. 60 crowd people are going. How long did the disciples live? Even Jesus himself, 33, said, I'm done. Let me go. When do you think people should live? According to the Bible, when they are done with what God has sent them to do. You, you want to finish, then your teeth will fall down. You can't even hold anything. Then you can't see. Now you can't see. Now you are smelling. Dead but alive. Hmm. We are going somewhere. To be continued. Thank you.
from God to you. Hope you've been blessed by the message you just heard. Stay blessed.